Hello everybody, my name is Drew, I'm the Deputy Editor-in-Chief for Threshold, and we're here at Flight Sim Expo 2024 in Las Vegas, and I have the pleasure of interviewing Nikki from Honeycomb. So, it's been a few months since we last spoke to you, have there been any significant changes in the situation with your former partner that you can share with us? Yeah, so, I mean, there's been a lot of changes and it's been quite a roller coaster ride where it's been there are times where I thought, all right, we're we are almost there, we have a solution, and then you know, two step forward, one step back. But uh, finally, in the last few weeks, uh, we have had quite a breakthrough. We have the terms for taking over the part of honeycomb that is held by my former partner. Uh, we agreed with to the terms in full with them. And uh, we also have a financial partner that is uh, very close to signing and a term sheet for uh, providing the support, funding support, not just to then acquire the, the assets that I don't currently have, but also to provide the funding for my product development uh, and, and, and operations so that when once we have everything in order, we can hit the ground running. And, I you know, I have a roadmap because there's been standstill. I have a roadmap that is 20 product long, and you know, stuff like that we developed, uh, like we showed the Tango Fox Rod, which is now 2021, which was at that time ready to go to tooling for mass production. But for you know the reasons that everybody pretty much know about now, it didn't. Uh, and so th three years has gone by. So I don't want to just go, all right, let's do the Tango Fox Rod. So I have, I have took completely revamped the product, added things where, because Flight Sim has evolved significantly in the last few years, I think. And so I have adapted the product to to follow, to have the same kind of growth. So it's it's, 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 it's going to be a new product. It's the design and the ergonomics change, but everything else has been adapted to be as far ahead as that was then, this is going to be now. All right. Um, so, you know, I know how you've been doing, but how has your your team within Honeycomb, like, adapted to the changes within the company itself? So, so you know, everybody that was Honeycomb guys, so, you know, they, they, my former partner had their own office, he has their own office in Hong Kong, they, those part managers and so on were all employees of him, but everybody that was wearing a honeycomb hat, the tech support team, my technical director, Grant Rose, uh, 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 David, who sits in Manchester, who runs the, it's all those guys, all those guys came with me and supported me, uh, and are still supporting me, uh, and those, that's, that's that's who Honeycomb is. No, actually, that's not true. Honeycomb is what the community has made it with and what they've given us. And then it's us. And then it's it's the industry giving us so much support as well that we can, like, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator made the code uh, changes. Uh, X Plane did source coding. coding. Uh, Austin came out and, and enable the uh, the dual trim because we put it in so like that whole thing it, it's not one thing that made honeycomb it's it's community industry and and, and my team that those it's a trifecta <laughs> yeah okay so moving on to more of a specific question um, were people able to receive their refunds as of now um, if not, um, are there any updates that you can share with us about that situation? So, yes, but since I am not in control, there was not there, there was my former partner's web shop. I, I can only tell you what the information I've been given and what I've seen. But so, with regards to refunds, uh, I I'm not sure. Uh, it's oh. just it's, I've I've been trying to figure out if there's a way with banks and so on, but. It seems like it's from credit card company to credit card company, but I would assume that anybody who has not received a refund, that they will then get a product. And what I know about 
product, the product side is, I know because I've seen pictures that they they have a thousand units, boxing packaging, and uh, that will be shipped not by a container but with with the courier service from China next week. Mark, yeah. next week shipping, right? Next week. That's from them. So <laughs> he's there. So yeah. we are still. So we. So are we still. Are we still communicating? You know, it's like obviously, red, but it's if we want to solve this, we have to have communications. We don't yeah. hear any disagreement and stuff. So next week, that's what they say. I trust Mark. All right. It's going to happen. And if not, then I will find a solution as soon as I have control of the company again. But right now, it's just some of the things. Like, it's not my sale. I can't even legally do anything about it. But once I have the control back, which hopefully is very, very soon, then I can do it. Everything is in my control again, and I can make sure that everybody is taken care of. Okay, so just, just for context for the people at home, yeah. um, could you tell us who Mark is? Mark is um, the director for Snakebite in Hong Kong, and um, and also he, he has a stake in the company as well. He's not the primary owner. But uh, he's the one who runs it. So I've been working with Mark on the project development. The things that has happened, transpired, is not the development guys' fault. It's uh, they have nothing to do with that. Mark and I are friends. But uh, you know, so you have to you have to make a distinction with with that and, and not just blank it. And when Mark says something, I trust him. All right. So, so if he says it ships next week, I'm pretty sure that it ships next week. And if it doesn't. We will figure this out. I promised in my first statement, like I said, I will take care of you. I will. But the alternative right now is is basically take pay for production out of my own pocket, which I never taken money out of Honeycomb ever, other than the paycheck. So I don't have that money, but you know, right now. So I've been hoping that they will fulfill their obligation and it looks like they are, and that's fantastic. Best for everybody. Yeah. Um so uh, if I remember correctly, earlier you said that everybody who pre-ordered would get a free Honeycomb hat. Yes. Uh, what's what's the progress on those so far? So let's get the honey units from that they send out first. But is there, am I holding my promise? Yes, absolutely. All right. I don't have a thousand hats right now in me, and so I'll have to talk. Actually, Mark with his sourcing manager was one that helped me get these. I designed this with an American company, but. Obviously, that's a different trophy. The, the first batch was made at the at an Asian factory, but so he has the contacts. The, everybody will get. A, I have the list of everybody who ordered and everybody who cancelled, because everybody who cancelled is also going to get ahead. All right. Whether they got the money or not, or we are getting a product. No, that doesn't matter. All right. So. Has your outlook changed on the situation um, as it progressed? Because when we last spoke with you, uh, you were quite confident you'd be able to regain control of Honeycomb as a manager. Um, I, is this still the case? Yes. So, um, it's I'm not counting my chickens yet. But the situation is, and um, I have to... I can show you documentation as well because I know that there's been some online that, that like this is true or not. But all product designs are trademark copyrighted by me, so I own all the parts. Like Bravo, Alpha, Charlie, everything is my designs and my intellectual properties. Uh, actually, even the logo is. But uh, what isn't is the brand name, the injection, all the tools and uh, that's required from manufacturing in China. It's not. And the name Honeycomb was trademarked by my phone party. So that's what we're trying to get so we can continue instead of having to start from the get-go. So um, we have agreed on terms with Snakebike. We have an investor that I am flying out to meet next week. But uh, the expectation from my attorney, which is... Uh, Brilliant. Um, he was the one that uh, managed the uh, sale of Scuff Gaming to Corsair, so he knows what he's doing. He's confident it's going to happen. Once there's two signatures, of, signatures on paper, it's basically just checking the checks and balances and to make sure everything's all right, and then then I have 100% control. So, wow. That, let's make sure the ink dries, right? But yeah, it's, it, we've never been this close in the whole process. All right. Um, have you had any? Direct 
contact with your former business partner and how did he react with you speaking to the media like us about the situation? Has he made any attempt to rectify his part in the situation? No. Um, and the last time I spoke to him was six months ago. Mm. I, you know, we communicate through his representative and my attorney and you know, the performance mark is kind of like can you know, communicate on what I, what, where I stand on things and so on, but it's, uh, if there was a benefit to doing it, I would, but you know, with what's transpired, I, I need to distance myself a little bit and have, you know, professionals like my, the law firm that represents me, make sure that everything is checked and verified and can be trusted as, as information and data. And so, that I've, that, yeah, so I just, All right, um, so looking towards the future a little bit, so um, what can we see, expect to see from Honeycomb in the near future and kind of beyond? So, I would love to show you my whole uh, product roadmap here. It's, 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 it's because everything has been kind of in limbo, I've just continued developing designs and products, but you know, but haven't been able to take it to the stage where we go into mechanical design and, and you know, uh, PCB and electronics design. So I have this whole backdrop list of things that I want to do that um, is taking everything to just the next level but maintaining the price point. So, so the, the, the general idea with Honeycomb as far as this, it has to move the needle, it has to offer something that's not in the market. Like I would never make a product that is just has the same features and the same quality and the same price point as somebody else. It has to be it has to be able to be affordable to a lot of people. It has to provide functions, quality features that isn't there. i bringing me to product to market is just not what I do. And and when the Bravo came out, uh, it was there's nothing like it on the market, and there still isn't anything on the market that can do that. But one of the problems with the flights and business is that almost everything that's in the market is 10 plus years old, or 10 plus years old that had a paint job and, and a, a new stick on top or something. There's no there's no innovation, mostly because the competition is very light, like flight sticks, Logitech Thrustmaster sits on 92 in the business, right? Something like that. They don't need to innovate because they have no, there's no competition. So like so the Logitech yoke, which is the one I, when I was excited, we were doing, that's the same yoke. Uh, and I don't want to do that. So they, our products are never finished in development. There's always con a continuous evaluation of what we can do. So I have already got Bravo 2.0 it, it designed. I have uh, Alpha 2.0 designed and ready. And what I'm doing is I'm, everything that the community has said they wanted and what's missing, that's what I'm putting in. Um, so for example, now, I'm to tell you this, but it is not like as soon as we sign the paper that I'm going to have that ready, right? So I just want to warn you it's, that it's not, it's not in three months, it's probably early next year. But for example, the, the new premium Charlie will have under the table mount, uh, 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 be able to just slide onto an under table mount. That is, you know, for example, because that's what a lot of people wanted. And, and it will have more uh, commercial. Uh, aircraft features where the old one had like more GA stuff. So it's, and that's all I want to say because I you know, I've made the mistake before of telling too soon about stuff and then people yeah. want it. And they, you know, uh, and, and so trust me, we have, we have some really cool stuff. All right, um, so just generally in the, the, the hardware market, do you, do you think there, 
Is there a portion of the hardware market that you think needs more attention from the general space? So do you mean from the industry? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, uh, everything. Pretty much everything. No, not like software side, both X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator and, you know, DCS and uh, Aerofly and Google are all right now ex accelerating the the stuff that you can do in, in, in the flight simulator. So on the software side, hardware is falling way behind. But yeah, no, I think that in every, almost every single category, I think there's improvement in in yokes and products. That's why I'm making improvements. Uh, but you know, we're that's the old category. Well, Charlie's now with pedals, but uh, everything else has been at a standstill for a long time and, and really needs innovation at, at affordable price points. If you want to pay a thousand dollars for something, there's great stuff out there. But that's not that's not for the common user they can afford that. So stand by, I have some I have some ideas, but I wish that it, I wish that everybody would do that because the simmers deserve it. That they are the choices that are out there right now it's just not good enough. I don't think so. Without pointing your fingers at anybody. But, yeah. yeah. So, you know, just this weekend we've seen a lot of, you know, force feedback stuff come be announced, such as like the flight sim stuff. There's also Moza coming into the space. Also Win Wing going with force feedback. So do you think um, that would be something you would consider for future honeycomb products? So let me put it this way. So the new, the replacement for the Alpha with the new features, the new Alpha, is going to be called Alpha Plus because it has, you know, it's an upgrade from what we got before. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the reason why it's called Plus and not Pro is the Pro is safe for something else. Ooh. But here's the thing. We, look, the, the flightsafe.com uh, yoke, uh, I haven't tried it, but the, the way that they integrated the software looks fantastic. I, I think it, it looks great. The product looks really good quality. It's, it, it's very, very differently designed product than we would, but it's still $9.99, right? A thousand dollars, I think, it's around there. Yeah. That's not that's not the common user, right? It's so for for force feedback to me, it has to be below five hundred dollars for force feedback too, which is the target. And so, I'm pretty sure I can do it, but it's it's the next step. Let's get the plus out uh, so that you know we have the next step. And then, the force feedback is a thing where it can be great, but it can also actually be uh, give be a hindrance almost. Like so, force feedback in on flight sim is way different than flight uh, force feedback in a racing sim. In a racing sim, it gives you, you know, that feedback from the road of what the air of the car is doing. Uh, but there's less of that in an aircraft, right? So it's like, where is it? Where's force feedback beneficial? So it isn't just a gimmick, and that's where you need to. And I actually, at flight sim's done a great job, I think, with doing that. Uh, but in general, it's just not. It's just that, yes, we want force feedback. Why do we want force feedback? That's what you need to know. So for general aviation, I think the, the number one thing is trimming. Be able to trim and feel the pressure release. Uh, for commercial aviation, fly-by-wire, there is, really isn't force feedback, right? But we you have things like stick shaker, um, a great feature that flight that flight sim yoke uh, did was that you had a touchdown feel. I thought that was a great idea. So, and Austin Meyer explained, uh, he said, um, not for this product earlier, he said, well, somebody, I can't remember who, and I'm not going to point anybody out, but somebody brought a post here, he goes, why didn't they come to me? I would have helped dial that in. And, 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 and he said he said to me, Nick, he said, hey, when you come out with force feedback, bring it to me, and I will make sure that it's going to work integration so that it's, it's beneficial and it feels like real force feedback. And that's so... Force feedback is not just force feedback, it has to be, 
it has to be real. So it, that's, that's, that's the point. And under $500. That's big. So the answer is yes, but that's the criteria that it has to meet. Okay. Um, thank you so much for talking with me today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. So yeah, thank you so much. Sorry for talking so much. Oh, I, no, know, no, 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 no. It's, I, it's I, totally fine. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. And I appreciate all of you guys that stuck around and all the messages and, and posts that you guys have done. It's, it means the world to me. Thank you. Yeah.